now. <laughs> All right, and now I've got to read the thing. I've got it over here. Uh, let's see. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting can do so by clicking on the live link to this Zoom meeting that can be found on the public meeting calendar on the Town of Amherst website or by dialing in by phone. The public is able to comment during the comment period uh, of the posted agenda by raising their hand. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the Town of Amherst's YouTube channel. All right, now get back to the meeting. Wait, wait, is that it? <laughs> wait, I think mm. I got it. Okay, all right, I'm back. <sighs> all right, so usually we do like a chair report first. Should we still go with that or would we feel um, more excited about learning about our new members and letting them introduce themselves and talk a little bit about themselves first. Do you want to do the minutes and get it out of the way? Oh, wait, yeah, yeah. Let's do the minutes and get it out of the way. I move that we approve past minutes. Second. All past minutes, right? All unapproved past minutes? Yeah. Okay, second. And Dara, do you approve? You're um you're on the she's muted. Like the, you mute. You're on the mute. <laughs> Sorry. Um. Don't we all have to vote? No, just the ones that like. We should. Oh I yeah, I approve. I, approve. I think we should have a, a, a people who are going to abstain do so, so I can make it in the in because I'm taking the minutes and I'd like to record that they abstained if that's what they're going to do. Okay, I'm so the other three of you that aren't haven't you know been here in the past <laughs> to know whether the minutes are are accurate or not i abstain uh, okay you're free to abstain if you would like yes i abstain Let's i also it. abstain so i don't have the minutes okay so wait a minute so like we got yeah we got a quorum okay yeah for the first time in a very long time we actually have a quorum Exciting. Okay, so the minutes are just going to say they were approved. Okay. Yay, finally. Okay, and then, all right, now let's have introductions. Let's see, on mine, my first, the first one in view is Terry. Terry, do you want to? Sure. Yeah, um, I'm Terry Holt. I'm really happy to be here. Um, I uh, work for the town of Arlington. I am a contractor working with their um, Commission for Arts and Culture. I just moved here to Amherst from Arlington. I'm loving Amherst so far. And I applied this position because I saw there were lots of vacancies and I'm hoping to meet some people in the arts and join the community and hopefully make a difference in public arts. Yay, so great to have you here. I'm Thank really you. excited. All right, how about Mikey? You're next in my view. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Mikey Cutting. Also, um, because I have a show at the town hall right now, I'm listed under Michelle Burnett too, all the mm -hmm. same person. I've lived here for 20 years. I've been involved in the Amherst History Museum as well as the Pelham Historical Society. Um, my sister was an artist and I show her work and I'm a beginning artist, but I'm very involved in arts. I studied at Christie's in London, so my background's in arts. Could you please spell your, your other last name? So me? it's Cutting, C-U-T-T-I-N-G. And um, my maiden name is Burnett, B-E-R-N-E-T. Okay, so I got two letters wrong, thank you. That's all right. And Lori, thank you, Mikey, for. Sure. Hi. 
Um, I'm Lori Friedman, and I've lived in Amherst for almost 29 years. Um, moved here from New York City, where I had a career in the arts. I was director of an art gallery in Soho at the time, and prior to that at one um, on the Upper East Side. So um, came to, came here with a strong career in, in the arts, um, in galleries. I also did one of these courses in London. I did the Sotheby's course in London, so, and was an art history major. Um, since being in Amherst, I've done some independent curating and I've managed a couple of artist studios um, and do work right now in artist legacy planning and estate planning. Um, but I also have um, done various different things in my time in Amherst because there wasn't the kind of opportunity here to do the kind of work that I did in New York City. So currently mm -hmm. I am the um, coordinator of marketing and development at Jewish Family Service in Springfield. Um, and I have kind of sideline business that connects into the arts. And I'm excited to be here and joined because I also knew there were openings and wanted to be more involved after all of this time living here. Awesome. Excellent, thank you. And Robert, you made it in. I did, thank you, okay. sorry I'm late. Yeah, we're, um, we're having the new people introduce themselves. So you're, you're next. Sure, uh, I'm Robert Brennan. Um, I've lived in Amherst since 2008. Um, and uh, actually met Jim uh, during my time at Pioneer Valley Performing Arts Charter Public School. I, I worked there as the uh, CFO for a number of years. Um, I spent most of my career in nonprofit um, finance and uh, I've worked in performing arts organizations and schools and community development corporations and have become very interested in kind of the intersection between arts and community development. Um, Obviously, these days, there's a lot of attention being paid to place keeping, place making, uh, various terms, uh, creative place making, but using the arts um, as, a, as a means of community development. And um, a friend actually had encouraged me to join the CPA committee. And when I was looking at the different committees that were uh, in the town um, and I landed on the public art commission started reading about it I thought it sounded like a lot more fun than the CPA committee so um, <laughs> I'm I'm excited to uh, to be a part of this and uh, um, look forward to working with all of you excellent thank you all right um, let's see let me see if I can pull up uh, the next thing would be chair report. All right, so I don't know how much you guys have been keeping up with this poetic dialogue situation that's been going on, but we had the poetic dialogue, if you're not familiar, it's, you know, those like black silhouettes of uh, Robert Frost and Emily Dickinson on the rocks over kind of near the, uh, the museum. Mm -hmm. Well, we had those restored because they were like really rusted out and they just looked terrible. And the artist that restored them accidentally put them in reverse order and they had Emily on Robert's rock and, and Robert on Emily's rock. And there was like this big outrage. It was, <laughs> it was big. It was in the newspaper <laughs> if you want to look it up. Um, so he fixed it. And within a week, somebody went and ripped Robert Frost down. So Robert Frost is once again not on his rock. Oh boy. Emily's missing too. Wait, what? I haven't gone by in a couple of days. Emily's I missing. Just, now. I, I just drove by there yesterday and because I was going to the uh, framing gallery across the street from the Dickinson house. And yeah. I noticed that there were neither silhouette was there. Oh, geez. <laughs> wow. All right. I'm guessing that she is also with the DPW because um, when Robert Frost was ripped down, he was left in the grass. They, the DPW got him and um, <laughs> was in safe hands and they were making a plan to reinstall him. I'm 
I suspect that they took down Emily so that she wouldn't get stolen too, but I'm going to have to um, call them tomorrow and make sure about that. Seems well, like maybe if they wanted to install the Frost one, they were taking Emily down because she was in Frost's place. Right? No, she was. It was restored back to oh, the original it, it spot. Got back to the right spot. So, okay. so yeah. It was, so it was restored with Frost. Was it in Frost place, and Emily was in her place? Yes. And then they ripped them down anyway. Yep, they ripped them down anyway. Well, I don't think that was probably an anyway thing. It was probably different people, don't you think? Possibly. Well, I didn't say it was the same person. I mean, but <laughs> it could possibly be the people who complained about the mistake oh just random vandals probably you know so this isn't is. storm damage or anything natural <laughs> occurring this is actual people like destroying kind of yeah you can tell when you look at it the like the bars that were holding them up are have been like bent like oh. seriously bent okay and he was ripped down that's too bad yeah, I actually didn't hear about it. And then I went, I walked by, you know, and then I saw that he was gone and I went into the town hall and they were like, oh yeah, he's, you know, this whole thing happened and he's with the DPW and everything's okay. Wow. Well, what we should figure out is what are we going to do? Because if we, we fixed it and then some, then people, for whatever reason, whoever it might be, they ripped it down again. So we going to put it back up and risk ripping it down again, or what are we going to do? I talked to Alan Snow and he said he wants to make a plan to make it um, less rip downable. He oh, wants to yeah. have like some sort of like the postings that are in there. He wants them to be sturdier so that they, it can't be ripped down. Okay. So is, okay. Who, who's ultimately responsible for this? Is it DPW or what is, what is this commission's responsibility? Ed with At this point, it's the DPW, but I just feel like, you know, we should know about it because it's, we're somewhat involved. <laughs> but at this point, it's the DPW that's dealing with it. Oh, good. So um, this kind of installation, is this meant to be a um, permanent installation or is this one of the kind of, um, one of those kind of installations that is meant to come down at some point, nature? No, it's or... meant this one's meant to be permanent. This is permanent, okay. Yeah. And how much did this cost altogether for the town? The restoration, I think we got 2,000 for okay. all in all. We got a grant through the um, Amherst Cultural Council. Right, okay. And we were actually trying to get a grant for a very long time, like several years with different entities. And it was finally the Amherst Cultural Council that gave it to us. Okay. All right, and um, maybe I should get you guys up on what's going on in the Town Hall Gallery, even though Mikey already said. Mikey has a show of um, her sister's works up there. Right. Um, in the front is my sister. She passed away 10 years ago. She didn't live around here, but she was a very good artist. And um, so I have four of her artworks, her G clays on the wall. And then down the hallway are mine and up on the second floor, they're mine. So well, mine are um, either in caustic or oil and cold wax. And that was your sister, I forgot, or your... Yeah, my Her sister daughter. was Meg Burnett. So she has a show too, right? Well, it's both of us. That's why my maiden name is used and not my married. But at Amherst History Museum, I go by Mikey Cutting. That's not going to be confusing. <laughs> I know. My husband even said that's confusing. <laughs> Oh. Right. Yeah, so just so you know, James is um, taking our minutes for us. That's why he's asking those questions. I know. Okay. 
right. um, I also got um, Amy Crawley's um, information when she was the head of the town hall art gallery. So I have all her information. Okay. Are you interested in taking on the management of town hall gallery? Um, I, I don't want to do it alone yet. I'd love to do it with somebody else, um, say two of us to take it on so we could both learn how and, and do that. But I don't want to do it wholeheartedly alone because of my other position at Amherst. Okay. All right. And um, we'll have to discuss if we want to go back to the way we used to do it back before the Rona. We used to do a thing where like once a year we'd have a call for artists and then we would pick the ones that we want, which were essentially all of them. And they would have shows in the town hall. And since then, I've just been kind of like hunting down people because it's just been like the three of us and it's it's too much to do a whole call for artists and everything. But if you guys want to go back to that, that's an option for the for the group. So I can make sure to send this to everybody. It's the town hall art gallery workflow. And it's from June uh, 3rd, 2021. Okay. And my plan is to leave the art commission in March. So I wanna like make sure that I like get you guys squared away on what you guys wanna do and where you wanna take it and like, you know, feel comfortable doing the things that you're doing by that time. I'd love to go back to the old way of doing things and put out a call for artists and try to get as many you know, opportunities for new artists we could get. Yeah, that's valid. Uh, where do you usually promote that? Is it on the, just on the town of Amherst website or do you put it on the Facebook page, a Twitter? Uh, we have a Facebook page and we have an Insta page. Okay. And we will need somebody that wants to, or multiple people that want to be um, like managing those the Facebook okay. and the Insta. So you think about if you wanna be part of that project. I will think about that, thank you. Okay. But there's and no then Twitter, we'll, we don't have a Twitter? No, we don't have a Twitter. Oh, probably I mean, thing. there's no, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with having a Twitter, just nobody's yeah. done it. <laughs> I think maybe that, uh, Time has passed. <laughs> yeah, it does seem like there's less Twitter these days, more TikTok. Yeah. Would it be possible to have a rolling, you know, submissions for the gallery so that people wouldn't, you know, necessarily have to do it just that one time a year if it could be something ongoing or four times a year just to give people more opportunities to hear about it? Yeah, whatever you guys want is, I mean, I don't think there's any rule in place it was just that was the way that it was done before you have submission guidelines someplace that we can look at yeah mikey has them in paper form from, oh, okay. from before and so I, mikey, and I can send them to everybody thank you, thank I, you. I got them from amy who used yeah. to be the town hall art gallery she was in charge right yeah, Amy, Amy was like, yeah, she okay. totally had that sewn up. It was good. Right. And she also <laughs> did the um, Thursday Arts Night. Yes. Okay. Okay. But that, the uh, Arts Night Plus is kaput now. There is no more. Right. Susona? Yeah. So uh, does it? Anybody have any good connection to someone who writes about the arts for the Amherst Bulletin? I don't know. Does anybody? I don't know either. <laughs> no, but uh, let me I mean, check I if I... it... I'm sorry, Jim, go ahead. I'll check with my wife. She seems to know anybody in the cultural, everybody in the cultural. 
truth. she does truth because that's what we need is somebody who right. whose radar every this commission can get on and then right will lead to another if we pay attention to her that's right. the plan yeah yeah, good idea. All right, so Jim, will you hunt uh, contact down from Gigi? Oh, okay, so let me be very precise. What am I going to get contacts for? Um, for uh, like a newspaper person that oh, would be oh, yeah, a good right. contact to have for the art commission. Oh, you mean just in general, not for any specific? Yeah, that's why I was asking. So a, a person who regularly writes about the arts. Yeah, that would be a great thing to cultivate. Hmm? That sounds like a really great thing to cultivate. I wasn't sure if you were talking about a particular project or just in no, general. No, yeah, that's general. why I ask. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can find news, a newspaper contacts for regarding writing for the, on the arts, if I can. Be great. Okay. There are also for the um, Hampshire Gazette, which is connected to the Amherst Bulletin. Right. When you have an art exhibition, you can uh, put it in their events. Yeah. And it's just an online submission and you go in and you put all the details in and they will list it. You know, who's that guy that writes making, he, there's a guy that writes about the town or some kind of column like that, that you can, he writes for the Hampshire Gazette. Can't remember his name. Oh well, I'll, I'll get it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> quick question: um, Do we use Arts Boston at all for their arts and culture calendars? Or do we yeah. have? We don't ever use that um, that tool. It's free. I was just wondering if we ever use Arts Boston calendars. I think we did when they were doing um, Art Week. Okay. And we were participating in Art Week, oh, right. but they oh. haven't done Art Week in like two years. Yeah, but they still have the Arts Boston. Um, there's like a, you can submit um, events, um, gallery, you know, announcements to Arts Boston. And okay. uh, it goes out, you know, it's on their website always. So it's a way for people to find, to find exhibits in your town. It's free. So that'd be yeah. a good thing to add to our media relations list. Yes, oh, definitely. Yeah. The guy I was talking about, sorry, the guy I was talking about was Farrar. So if you had, if you have something in the arts, like when my book was published, he did a thing on it. Uh, Steve, do, his first name is. do we have a chat that we can post anything in? I, I have a link. There's also the Valley Arts Newsletter, which is updated weekly. And it lists everything, you know, happening in the arts. We should be submitting there. Yeah. Yeah, we should. There's a chat in this um, in Zoom. Is there a chat? I don't see it at the bottom. Oh, you know, I don't either. Yeah, you're right. I don't see it either. I wonder if it's because it's being recorded, like no, a chat no. wouldn't show up, so they don't want to. Never. Well, I can that. certainly send you all the link to the um, the Valley Arts newsletter. But I guess what, what this is about, uh, this discussion then is about um, creating a, a outreach list, um, really a, a mailing list for any press releases we do and promoting any events, anything happening in Amherst that we want to get yeah. out. Yeah. When we get the, um, the minutes um, to look over later from Jim, there's gonna be all kinds of great stuff that we can refer back to also. Because we'll we'll get like the draft minutes and we'll see all this stuff. So just put it out there. Let's let's definitely look at that. And, and you will get them in the next couple of days. Great. Great. As distinguished from two days before the next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> it's so easy. All right. We're also gonna need a treasurer. Where is it? Treasures. Tre that would be under treasures report, I gather, since we don't have yeah. one. Well, I kind of feel like it's we're we're kind of going through like things that need to get done. Like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> feels appropriate. 
but we're going to need someone to do that too. These are things I just want like everyone to be thinking about. I mean, nobody has to be like, I'm going to do it right now. Like, just be thinking about these are the things that are going to um, have to get filled soon. And let me see the actual agenda again. Actually, the treasury report is right after the chair report. All right, so do I feel like we got chair report stuff? Yeah. All right, and then um, the big project on the horizon is making it public. And that I had a meeting in like late August, like at the very end of August with, um, with Maureen Pollock and right. some other people in town, but Maureen Pollock is essentially like the spearhead of this. She's in the planning department. She's really into like public art and stuff. So she's like a good, oh wait, looks like Maureen Pollock is here. <laughs> She's here. She just raised her hand. I didn't know that she was there. I didn't either. Wait, how do I let her in? Wait a second. This is never. I don't see her. Huh. Well, okay. So I guess I can. Wait. There it is. Allow to talk. Yay, Maureen Pollock. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi, can you hear me? I'm um, so glad you're here. If I knew you were here, I would have had you speak like right away. I know your time is very oh, valuable and I appreciate you coming and talking to us. Oh, not a problem. I've enjoyed the discussion so far. Um, I, so you are in a webinar. So um, I'm happy not to have a camera, but um, if, if you guys want to like meet me, uh, have my, if, uh, I, I would love to have my camera on if possible. Uh, we'll see here. So if you, Click on the, um, there should be like a list of people um, in attendance. I forget what it looks like. It should be at the bottom and then you can expand it and you can look at all you guys, uh, uh, like a list. Does that pop up? I don't and, mind. And you're, you're called panelists and then there should be a button called attendees. Yep. Yeah, I see there's one, you're the one attendee. Yeah, so if you hover over my name and right click it, Oh, wait. Will, there should be a button to say, okay, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Ta -da. Yay. Second, right. I need to fix my camera. Yeah, and then the, and also that way you can see who else is in attendance from the public. Well, I so, can't see them and it's kind of bothering me because I need to know if the public is attending the meeting for the minutes. Oh, yeah, so now I, I can check for you. So if again, at the bottom of your screen, it says participants and it says eight mm -hmm. panelists. That's oh, yeah, you guys and me. And, there, and then if you click over on where it says attendees, it says zero. So no one's here. Okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so um, she, uh, I can, I'm happy to give sort of an overview of this project, Shoshana, if that's helpful. Yeah, that'd be great. Great. Okay. Yeah. So my name is Maureen. I'm one of the staff planners uh, uh, with the town of Amherst. And um, Paul Balkman, uh, the town manager, uh, found a grant program last perhaps uh, December or January. Um, that he wanted the town to apply for, uh, it, which is to provide uh, a training to do a call to artists for a temporary art installation. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a former public art committee member and the chairperson, uh, Bill Kazin and I, um, so the town got this grant was to provide this, I, I think it was five weeks of training where you learned um, more details about uh, doing like a call to artists or an RFP. And, um, and at the end, the incentive of going through the training is, is that the town awards, uh, is awarded $10,000 to do a call to artists for a temporary art installation. So it's kind of like doing a homework assignment at the end of the semester. So 
Um, we need to do, uh, the town needs to do a call to artists by the end of this calendar year and to put it out to the public. And then uh, next year, calendar year, uh, we need to um, actually install it. Um, the grant is through the New England Art Foundation mm -hmm. and uh, I think they're called uh, Fork uh, Forecast Art and um, great organizations. And um, they can provide us uh, a couple more trainings this fall while um, the town and you in this committee uh, creates a call to artists. And um, so I'm really here to sort of pitch that project and um, and ask for you to uh, review a, a call to artists that we could either work on together or I could come up with a draft call to artists and um, at maybe the next meeting we could um, talk about um, what works or what doesn't work if you wanna see any revisions. And so there's a couple things I would like to discuss with you, but first, do you have any questions so far? I have a question. Um, I'm wondering, uh, are there any materials from the trainings that you'd be able to share with this committee since many of us are new and it oh, seems yeah. like um, that would be useful for us to be able to review? Absolutely, yeah. that's a good, uh, good idea. I'm, I'm happy to uh, send that materials to you by email. Thank you. And I just wanna confirm what I heard that this call has to go out before the end of this calendar year. Mm -hmm. And the whatever the installation has to be done next year. Is is there a designated place for the installation at this point? No, and actually that's, um, there's four things I wanna talk about and that's the first one. Okay. Well, so I have like, so you've got some, I'm not clear on what's, what you're, what, what we're dealing with. So I heard you say that you had gotten some training on called artists and then it turned into a discussion about a project and I I'm I'm not clear about whether your training was because for this project or I, I'm not clear about the relationship between that and the project you're talking to plus I'd like to know where the funding is going to come from yeah sure good questions um so the training um, is really geared towards grant administrators and people uh, it, um, it, uh, for grant administrators that work with municipalities to um, explain what is a call to artists uh, process administratively and to talk about how do you engage the public as part of your overall project because here we are trying to promote art for the public so how do we reach out to our residents and different uh, and within our our residents different demographics um, and so that was um, big themes of of the training and it touched upon how do you select, they gave us ideas of how do you select uh, locations um, in town, if it's in like a downtown or in village centers and think about, and then they talked about, you know, um, different art mediums and, and themes. Um, so there was like, a, it was like a poo-poo platter of training. I definitely don't feel that I, I, I'm, I definitely feel like I'm a novice. So I am very much uh, I did learn a lot through the training, but it seems like I I've never done personally a call to artists. So I I'm, I'm, I'm the new kid on block. So I'm definitely coming to you all for assistance. And so, so at the end of that training, um, the New England uh, Foundation for the Arts uh, provided the town of Amherst $10,000 to do an actual call to artists to put in an uh, installation of art that is temporary in nature. Um, and so that would be installed or there could be an event or uh, it could be lighting. It could be, it's very open-ended um, such as art is in general. So um, yeah, so hopefully I explained that better. So was that New England F Foundation for the Arts? Yes, yeah. yeah. And are the artists, when you put out the call for artists, is it limited to artists who live in Amherst or is it broader than that? That's a good question. So let's start, it seems like, let's start at the beginning. So, you know, I've spoken to um, the planning director and uh, DPW and um, the town manager's office. And, you know, we would like to, if possible, focus in the downtown uh, as, as a possible um, overall sort of location. Um, and so, 
Um, we're wondering if it would make sense if it, you know, uh, if we wanted it to be sort of like a sculpture or something physical that's going to be installed, would, would we want it to be at Kendrick Park or Sweetser Park or the Tom Common? Um, and, and those are just some ideas. And so I was wondering if you all had any ideas of if an event or a, or a physical tactile um, art uh, installation would make sense in any particular location in downtown. So are we going to be brainstorming this right now or can we write down our ideas and, Ooh, and throw yeah. them back and forth through, like throughout the week? Because I've yeah. got a bunch and I'm sure a lot of so, us have a lot of bunch of great ideas. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So then the next question is, and yeah, that, that's a really good suggestion because, you know, you got to sort of unpack what I'm saying and, and think about it before responding. So the next question is, is uh, what kind of art mediums would you uh, think would be uh, something fun for this project that, and keep in mind it's $10,000. Unfortunately, I don't think the town has money to add to it. Um, so it, it's 10,000 max. That's and a good amount of money. <laughs> it is, yeah. Not, and that's then, not nothing. Yeah, no, totally. Um, and then what is, um, is there an art theme? Uh, so if we did a call, do we want to say we really like fauna and flora? May, you know, could there be some art installation based on plants and wildlife? Or so that's just one example. Or is it open ended, uh, where it's we want a sculpture at this location, or um, and then um, get into the call. And then uh, the fourth item is what kind of public engagement strategies should we implement um and you know uh, do, would we have a selection committee uh that would jury the the selection of the art or would we do a sort some sort of creative uh, maybe people would walk and, and look at the different designs or there would be something on social media that people could vote on um things of that nature and other other ideas that i'm definitely not thinking of and so those are the four four main things that I'm seeking input is project wow. location, art medium, art theme, and what kind of public art engagement strategies should we implement for this project? And what about time frame for how you said it needed it was temporary, but what how long? So very open ended. It could be okay, a, so a one a, one day yeah. event. It could be up for a couple of years. It could, if the town and residents really like this temporary art installation, perhaps it stays. So that, and that would all have to be agreeable upon the town and, and a particular artist. But the organization is very, um, uh, um, very flexible with what kind of art would be provided here. So, and who's in charge of this project? Well, I, I think it's a collaboration between you all and myself and whoever would like to help. So, excuse me, um, Maureen, could you send an email with those four points in it and any other notes you wanted to help us with to sure. all of us? Yeah, absolutely. That'd be great. Yep. So might we be interested in collaborating with other town commissions to come up with some themes? Because I think this speaks to the whole town. We could we could bring in other commissions that are looking for some representation or, or, or messaging. I think it'll be really good for us as a commission to collaborate with other commissions, right? Um, so it's not just us in our little echo chamber. I think we could bring others in and really get a great message out. We could do sustainability or we could do um, diversity I and mean, there's so many different things we could talk about, but bringing in other voices from town might be really, really helpful. Is that a thing that we might be interested in and in bringing in other, like bringing other like, commissions like, in? Like who? So just give me an idea. Yeah. Who, we got a bunch of commissions. You know, we have. We had uh, a. There was a meeting where we met with different people in town and. It felt like at the end of that meeting, it was just a let's do a completely wild call for artists and see what happens. 
Well, we got like a conservation commission. I mean, we've got lots of different commissions that could probably use help with their own messaging. And we might be able to join, you know, join Would together. Would it be help helpful? Something. Yeah. Um, um, that's an interesting idea, Terry. Would would it um just shooting this uh just thinking out loud um since um so many people uh, you know people have uh, busy lives and are sometimes overcommitted to go to other board uh, board meetings uh, um but uh like such as the com com but I do really I I like that concept would it uh what would uh, folks feel about if I emailed various boards and explain the project and said at your next meeting, if you guys want to offer any suggestions about themes, uh, for instance, um, please provide us your top three. Maybe instead of just, that's a little a little general, maybe we could focus in as a commission first, because I I think um, having a more targeted ask would be, uh, you'd probably get a lot better um, reception. Yeah, I, that. I agree. I think we need to, as a commission narrow down the focus yeah i don't think you want to say hey give us the theme i think we need to say yeah. hey, we're thinking about these themes how do you think you might want to join with us and 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 help us focus our message and help you know help yourselves too if we came up with like as a as a team if we all decide on our theme and i think that'd be really wonderful and creative and fun and then ask for you know more targeted input maybe yes sir. um so uh, a couple of thoughts. So one, I'm wondering about um, collaborating potentially with the uh, Business Improvement District or the Downtown Amherst Foundation. There are a lot of empty storefronts and you know a lot of towns do pop-ups, uh, often art themed um, for a night or a week. Um, I think it could be a way, I mean, I think, of Hastings as an institution in town, which is now empty and and a fairly sizable space, it, it could be potentially kind of an exciting thing to think about um, some sort of event or or installation there. Um, but also, just I'm wondering, stepping back a, a bit more in terms of, I guess, understanding our charge as a as a commission and um the idea of because I, I forget where i was reading i it was another town i don't know if it was massachusetts but there was a photo of a sign that uh the city or municipality had just put in a spot in the city and it said you know what kind of public art do you want in this space and so they were soliciting obviously responses from anybody who happened to pass by. And so I'm, I'm wondering about um, how we, I guess, democratize the process so that it's not really our responsibility to come up with these themes because then we'd have, you know, six or seven people in town coming up with the idea of what should or shouldn't be public art necessarily. So I just think it, 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 as we go through this process, um, you know, I guess it speaks to the public engagement piece and, and how are we really going to uh, ensure that the diversity of voices are being heard and uh, involved. There's definitely a calendar yeah. challenge with that, yeah. You know. I like the idea that you have to pick the spot, you have to pick a place first to put up a sign like that. But I like the idea of letting it be free to anybody who wants to respond. I like that. So I think you could also accomplish that with a survey. Um, I don't know how you'd get that out to all of the citizens that you want to target. Um, but you, you know, we could put out a survey and collect responses. Um, Maureen, I'm worried a little bit about the time element here. If we need a call for artists out by the end of the year, we need to get on it and get it done ASAP. And that makes me a little yeah. worried about, about getting that public input. Like, as you know, that's a bit of a schedule crunch. It is. We only have three meetings, essentially. Which for makes us. me think maybe, uh, yeah. Anyway, I'll stop talking. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm curious. One thing I, I, I looked on our, on the 
town website and um, I do live here and I see things in town. I don't always know what's what that I'm looking at in terms of sculpture that was installed at, um, you know, I think Kendrick Park. Over the years, there's just been a lot of different things that have, some have come and gone, some are still there. I don't know what came through the town of Amherst, what were, you know, gifted. Um, so is there a place that kind of has the list of what we do have currently as public art so that I can kind of think about this in context of what's already here and then think about what are we missing? You know, what don't we have? What would be in, uh, something to add in using this grant um, to add to what we have, what we've done. And I, I just, even though I've lived here, I feel like I don't actually, you know, I can name off a few things I've seen and I bet there's things I've missed because I just didn't know they were there. Yeah, there's a pamphlet that you can download that's on the um, Amherst Public Art Commission website. They also have printed ones at the um, at the bid. Great, I will get that and download it. I, I I may need a link if you can just send me the link to download it because I didn't find it. Okay. No, we have a chat in here. I have a question. Um, I feel like it was mentioned in a meeting that I think I watched prior to joining the commission, but there's my understanding is there's a little space that was designated as the public art commission yeah. space right in front of Amherst connections yeah, and yes. the empowerment the theater arts. That would be and realignment kind of, park. Realignment, what is it called? Realignment park. Realignment that park. Yeah. And, yeah. And it's kind of a, it's almost like a natural amphitheater in, in the way it's, I don't know if it was intentionally designed that way, but, um, you know, it, there I, is I think, it? it's on, right um, by the cow and down, you know, where the weird cow is the, I forget. It's just down the street from, uh, if you know where, uh, share coffee shop is, yeah. it's, it's maybe half a block or. Oh, oh. Isn't it really small? It is. Yeah. It's it's small, ish. Something like it's like fifteen feet by, like ten feet, something like that. Perfect for buskers, you know. Well, I was going to say, you know, I I when I first saw it and walked by, I thought, wow, you know, this would be a great spot for a poetry slam or some sort of spontaneous performance. But I, I mean, whatever happens. But I think one of the things that had also been discussed previously is. Sort of raising the profile of the commission because I'm sure there are plenty of people in town who don't realize that there actually is a public art commission. Right. Um, yeah. And so, you know, it could, I don't know, I guess when we're thinking about location, um, just, uh, yeah, that's definitely that. a location that popped in my mind first and yeah. foremost, if we were getting like location specific, being that like we actually own this space in town. Yeah. I think I watched it's underutilized. Thing. Yeah. That'd be a fun place to to make public and it's a great idea. Yeah. A, I would love to see like a work day there where like maybe we could go and if anyone's down with this, we could like do some weeding or whatever because it's it's kind of raggedy. Yeah, I, I visited it last week and stood up on the porch of the building right next to it and just stared at it, you know? <laughs> and um, it is, it's really small. And also the cow is there. Yeah. <laughs> so whatever you do, it's going to speak. They're going to speak to each other in That's, some way yeah. if it's something that is physical, tactile, mm. really there. So it's a kind of it's a slightly tricky space unless something is very abstract it, from my point of view yeah. you know but it's really worth going and standing on the porch of the shop called home and looking out at it and this uh, orientation of it to the street and to the cow okay <laughs> so what i think is my my point i think we need a list of steps that we need to take very concrete steps. That's great. Yeah. That yeah. we could have available for our next meeting to focus the discussion. And a timeline. 
Oh yeah, and a timeline, thank you. Sure, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to provide that. Great. Do we know, worst, worst case scenario, if for some reason the time timing is not met and we don't have a call by the end of the year, does that mean that the grant is forfeited or is there any? Uh, they gave us $5,000 so far. Once um, okay. they actually have to review the draft call to artists and once it's finalized, and either they approve it or it's uh, emailed out, you know, whatever, you know, sent out and to the universe, um, then they give us the additional $5,000. I see. So and and when, when did the process begin? I'm just wondering why, uh, were there some obstacles? The training was in the spring. Um, unfortunately, although I am very happy to be part of this project, this is not my primary role. Um, uh, with my position for the town of Amherst and um, there's been various other um, pressing projects to work on so I'm, I'm sure. just getting to this now yeah. so sorry mm -hmm. uh, so no. we're gonna just no no, no. I, I, I wasn't can. trying to place blame I was just yeah. curious if there were things going on that that prevented it uh, yeah from... so but I am very happy to oblige to the idea of something like a survey if if we were um, and I can take um, some time to kind of think about this between now and the next meeting so as possible ideas to sort of help see, to move this forward in a quick manner. I like Robert's idea of it being like a performance space. And if we did something like, like we split up the money into like, you know, every weekend for like a big chunk of time, we sponsor like some performer to go in there and do whatever kind of performance they want like some sort of you know small enough performance to fit in there then maybe that would encourage it to like naturally turn into that's the spot you go to do like some cool thing or to go watch some cool thing you know but like once the habit is formed like it would continue on on its own perhaps at, at Realignment Park, is that the space you're referring to? Yeah. Because like, as it is, you know, if it was just like a one-off, I don't think people would like get into the habit of like being like, oh, let's go check out Realignment Park and see what's going on. But if it happened like a, enough times, it would make a habit. And that would be like in the spirit of the community building. Just so like we have three meetings left. Um, it sounds like we need to kind of move things along pretty quick. Um, do we, can we maybe, um, I know time is always of the, you know, essence here, but um, some really smart people here. Do we have any brainstorming happening or do we want to throw out some ideas and talk about them or do that on email or? I, um, I don't know if it'd be helpful, but uh, just to let you know, to fill you in, um, Shoshana, I can't remember if you went to the meeting with the Cultural Council District. Were you there? Yes. Yeah. On August yeah, I was 31st. There. And so we had um, it. Uh, there were, I wanted to reach out to the um, artists um, that are part of the Cultural Council District Committee and a few gallery owners um, joined together in the Amherst bid. And I, I could uh, email this to you, but we talked about their ideas mm -hmm. uh, for brainstorming. Um, and then uh, public engagement strategies to implement. I don't know if that would be helpful to- That'd be really valuable, yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, so I, um, there's not a lot, so I could maybe just go through it right now. So possible project at, project locations, art on the train bridges, um, realignment park, such as sculpture or plantings, uh, the town common right in front of uh, town hall, um, two sites there one facing Town Hall and one facing Hastings. Okay. Uh, entering the town line, such as Route 9, on the town green, such as the East Town Common, big whiteboard, we are one people, so someone said. I like that. Uh, put an outline of a mural and paint by number for community members to paint. Welcome in multiple languages in downtown. So some sort of art that, that's uh, speaking to that message. Uh, series of social dances or music, artists walk along tra uh, the conservation trail, backdrop for youth brigade, Native American medicine wheel at roundabout at like triangle in 
East Pleasant Street um, was the one that they were referencing. And then public engagement strategies to implement. Advertise call to artists that's inclusive um, to various um, demographics in town um, and to all ages, mobilities, and uh, you know, racial and, and educational backgrounds, I guess. Um, uh, building community through the arts, must engage the public through the process, don't be prescriptive, leave it open-ended for the artists to choose, mural locations, sculptural locations, ADA accessible and, uh, and make it safe. Selection committee should be diverse uh, with um, uh, public art committee members and members of the public. Okay, thank you. So can you send that to us? Oh yeah, yep, I'll send that to you. Thanks. Okay. And what, um, and so, uh, uh, yeah, so I'll send that to you. Um, and, um, and if Shoshana, if you could just let me know when your next meeting is. Okay. All right, and if there's no other questions, or I don't know if you guys still want to stay with this topic, or um, I, I'm just going to throw out an idea. I've had a lot of involvement with the um, UMass University Museum of Contemporary Art, and um, they've you know engaged with a lot of local artists, and you know have just so. I, you know, I think involving someone who is really on the jury committee who has that kind of broad knowledge of who who the artists are in our community and can kind of speak to diversity in that in their selection is going to be really important. That's a great point. Yes. This is actually a pretty big project, so I think mm -hmm. it could be really, it's, it needs to get really at some point soon, really narrowed down right. into a very clear focus and then making sure that all of these different issues that we want to make sure, you know, that, pu that public, whatever the pro whatever we think it, it decide that, you know, it involves public engagement and diversity and speaks to the town so all of those things but I, I feel like we really have sounds like a really short amount of time to me well this is October and the next meeting is November yeah Lori that's a really great I'm really glad you said that um I, I think with our time with our time challenge I mean I think if we chose like something like a mural and we had a basic theme that we thought would be really um welcoming um, and then we would ask, we would get that jury together to come to come up with the best artist for this and then choose an artist and let them have the reins. And, you know, that would be a great opportunity for our town. Well, I, I don't know how to pull need... something else together so quickly by the end of the year. Or, you know. If you want to do it quickly, then I having spent my career doing things under pressure then my suggestions would be that you need to have a very focused presentation in writing delivered to us as soon as possible, preferably within a week. Although I, I know that's asking a lot, but then on the other hand, so is getting this project done by the end of the year. And then we can study that and then have a meeting earlier in next in November because we'll get into Thanksgiving if we don't. And then we, if it's very focused and very precise, and maybe, maybe the author of it has three suggestions for different projects that we could do. Maybe somebody would help that person, so it's two persons working on it, not just one. And then we'll have something that we can actually discuss. But right now, what we're doing is we've got a lot of ideas. They're very general ideas thrown out because we haven't heard the project before. So that's what people do. So, so that's what I would like to see. Maureen, could you look into if there's any leniency at all for a commission to ask for an extension of the time frame that you gave us, just so we'd happen to have that knowledge? Yeah, sure. I, I'm happy to ask. 
I have a feeling you should know it's that. Be a no, but I, yeah. I'm happy to ask. Well, it depends on what you. It also depends on why we're asking for it. Like, if if someone's asking for it, why would it be being asked for? Because we. This is the first time this has been focused on, and all the details have come up. So it's really helpful to know so much about it. It's great. Thank you. And um, it'd be nice, though, to maybe, you know, say the, the commission has been in a lot of transition. And that the, I mean, I, I, I think that it's a good idea to be able to have all these great ideas that people are offering about the value of it and uh, about the organizational difficulty of some of it to, to you know to be able to feel good about that and not feel under the gun and maybe we can um, make it a, a schedule for something next week if maybe we can all kind of people who are interested in talking this yeah. out and throwing some ideas together just in case that doesn't pan out we can yeah i think you'll be better off with two or three people because when you get more than two or three people it's very hard to move quickly yeah, there could be a subcommittee formed. A subcommittee could um, get together and talk about it and not have to deal with the uh, being so rulesy, right? With the public meeting law. I want to be on the subcommittee. Sign not me up. necessarily. Don't. Maybe, maybe not. I would love but, to be on that committee. But regardless of whether they do or they don't, I think we should have a subcommittee. Lori, right. join me. <laughs> Come on, Robert. Come on, guys. <laughs> Well, I was, I was just going to say, you know, there's an organization called Commonwealth Murals that is involved with the, um, what is it called, Fresh Paint Springfield, and uh, I think she still lives in Amherst, Britt Rua is the executive director of that, and I, I you know, hearing the, obviously, the, the time constraints, uh, I forget who mentioned something about, you know, maybe it makes sense in this case to go with something that's already somewhat packaged you know they they have a model they engage an artist to create the mural and then the community is invited to participate actually it's like a big paint by numbers on the side of a building right? yeah actually Basically. about that, that project though um because i had i had brought that one up at um at that meeting that happened in august and gabby the um the director at the bid said that she was um, going to resurrect that project on her own with different funds. Oh, okay. So who could we get to help Ms. Pollock? So we got one volunteer, Terry Holt. I'll volunteer. Yay! Yeah, Come on, Robert, you too. Come on. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> no, I, I'm very interested. I, I Unfortunately, this next month, uh, time-wise, uh, but I, I mean, depending on how much uh, how often you're going to meet or discuss I mean I would well what about what about if we volunteer to have a the net rather than you're volunteering to see the whole thing through to the end <laughs> there are two or three of us that we volunteer to meet again talk about this because I think there's sure. a lot of information we don't have that is going to be sent to us that's been talked about Maureen you said there were several things you can send to us Right. We can review those and then we can meet and really come up with um, kind of a, like all these things we talked about, the, a timeline and some of these, just right. come up with something that to really narrow this down and then come back to the committee. That's like that. We've got three people right, right now. Hmm? We got three people right now, right? All right. What, who do we have? Me and Terry. Oh. Robert and Michelle, everybody. Yeah, great. Yay. Great. I think we should meet next week about this, get all of the information. I think I agree. Robert, I'm also super busy right now, but me too. Know, but I'll make the time. I think right. um hopefully together we can narrow something down enough. So wait a minute, how many people we got now? I think we have four. Four people. Robert, okay, you just put yourself into an open meeting law issue. Four people cannot get a quorum. A quorum cannot discuss matters that in front of the commission without complying to the open meeting laws. Good. Oh, so there's a maximum of three on the subcommittee. 
Well, yeah, you know, if it's if it's a formal subcommittee, then you still have to comply with open meeting laws because now it's a sub formal subcommittee of the. So the only way you can get around the open meeting law if it's legitimately just three people getting together uh, to form their own proposal unofficially, and then they can talk to each other. They can't mail it to the whole committee because then they've communicated with the quorum. And you can then present it to the committee commission. Sorry. So we can't come together with an idea and email it to everyone. We have to. You can. You can. You can email documents that are going. To, oh, geez. You're getting. You know. I. I don't really want to. You know. You. You're supposed to be able to email documents that are going to go for the committee on on the as long as there's no discussion, but if the document is a discussion, then, and I can tell you from experience somewhere that Robert knows about, that the attorney general has a bunch of very young lawyers and is dying to find violations of open meeting laws, so that even if you have a group of people who are not a committee talking to each other, I mean, there was one incident where the open meeting law attorney decided that there's a violation without talking to anybody, giving nobody an opportunity to say anything. And he turned a, a group of, of people who are not actually a formal committee into a formal committee for the purpose of finding a violation. So, I mean, it's very fraught. The open meeting law is very fraught. So I'd rather get guidance from somebody official at the yeah sure so so for a seven member board um i can double check tomorrow but if if um i believe three would not make uh, a quorum so we could three uh, members we could meet next week um and, okay, and and meanwhile i can email the whole board uh the meeting minutes that i talked about um that i had with um the Amherst bid, there was a someone from the cultural council in the cultural district and some gallery owners. Um, and then just more information about this grant overall. Um, sure. and, and then everyone would not email me back. Uh, if anyone had any questions or comments to send to me, they, they would need to send it to me uh, individually and not copy all. And that, that's advice that um, planning staff gives to all board members. Okay, there's a footnote to that. Have you got somebody you can check with at the town about open meeting law issues? Oh, sure. Yep. Okay. So you're, you're, if, so if the three people are not a subcommittee, supposedly you, they can meet and discuss things. Yeah, but I if, can, uh, you, I can talk to the me, planning director tomorrow and confirm if it's three or two. And no, then, but um, do you understand what I'm saying? Because I'm not sure I got my point across yet. If they decide that the three people are a subcommittee, the open meeting law applies independently to the subcommittee. And now the quorum is two. Okay. Yeah, that's the problem that I, I would like. Yeah, to I mean, us. I think this to me honestly sounds like a subcommittee so in which case you would have to notice it and have public and it's a much harder to function so i'm not i'm suggesting we do not take a vote and then but i think we should check because I, I don't want to see a violation open meeting law. and you know i hear you you know it could be if this, if if the discussion so far has turned this into a, 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 a open meeting law subcommittee, then you're going to have to comply with all that stuff. Can could we meet again as a committee in a week with whomever can join us? Well, you could. The subcommittee could meet, you know, in the same way we're meeting right now, over Zoom and everything. And okay, then, as long as Angela's contacted and we make it like an official Zoom meeting and everybody can see it, like in the right. world. Yeah, that okay. in fact that's the safest, that's the safest way to do it. Okay. All right. Um, Maureen, do you want me to talk to Angela about that or do you want to go through your avenues? Um, yeah, I, I um I can uh, actually you you can um contact her about when you have the date and time and you can ask her to put it on the town calendar. Okay. 
So should we discuss now what, what are good times and days for that? Or do we do that on email or do a Google Doodle doodle poll? Or what's the best way to do that? If you're doing it right now, it's going to be a subcommittee. So <laughs> I think it's safer to treat it as a subcommittee anyway. Um, I I don't see any problem with figuring it out right now. If everyone, like, is Monday the same time good for those that wish to join? It's Halloween. Oh, it's Halloween. Oh, it's Halloween. Uh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> that yeah, so not. I can't do Tuesday. I could do Wednesday the 2nd. Um, let's see. Well, I don't want to be a... Uh... A nudge or anything but i think you should keep it to three people and then the other people who join it are joining it as spectators not participants yeah, does maureen count as the third person or is it three yeah okay. i think she well i don't know three or four but the more you get the harder it is to get something done okay her. so if three <laughs> if three commission members join maureen would that be okay you know it's a judgment call It'll yeah, well, it. we'll talk fine. to as Angela as, about it. As long as it's uh, duly note, uh, advert, uh, posted on the town calendar, it just needs to be advertised in the town calendar for you. Hey, I'm, I'm free uh, November 2nd also at 6 o'clock. That would work for me too. November 2nd at 6. Does that work for two, two other members? Robert? Yeah, so Is Lori, that? Terry, and Robert? Mm, no, unfortunately, next week for me is not. Good. Okay. I can go. Okay. Terry, and we have Michelle. Anyone else? Great. Good so uh, tell you what. So I will uh, talk to uh, the planning director and see if two members can meet uh, without needing to post this on the town calendar. It is not safe to do that. Oh, oh okay. I mean, you can talk to her, and if she says, if you can get somebody to say definitively, fine. But this discussion right now, and she needs to know that it was decided who was going to be on this group at this meeting. Because I think when is our next official meeting? Sorry. When is our next official meeting? Uh, we haven't decided that yet. We can decide that um, after we're done doing our other stuff. But I mean, if we want to think about it right now, while we got our um, books if, out, if there right? are two members, Terry and Michelle, that are agreeable to meet, uh, and and um, and I could um, call. I think the Lori also office. wanted to be there. What? I think Lori also wanted to be. Oh, there. Lori, I didn't, I didn't see you. Oh, so Lori, I, I think that we could. Let me confirm whether that meets quorum. If that meets quorum, um, then let's plan to meet at six o'clock, November second. If that doesn't meet quorum, then I guess this will just have to be postponed to the next uh, regularly scheduled meeting. Well, you Does only need work? 48 hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when okay, and I, uh, next if you meeting? guys could just keep me in the loop on that when you're meeting and stuff, just so I know that you're meeting just for, I don't know, kicks and giggles, I guess. <laughs> okay. And then what's, what's your next uh, regular scheduled meeting? Uh, do you guys want to actually look at that right now since yeah. we have our calendars out? Let's do that. Um, do you want to do Monday the 14th? That's before Thanksgiving week when things get crazy. I can do that. Or at least I think it is. Is I can it's do on it. A, Thanksgiving's on the 24th, right? Uh, I believe so. So like Wait. if that, yeah, that gives us like a full yes. week before we even start thinking about Thanksgiving. So the 14th at six. I can do that. I can do that too. Me too. I can do that. For 14th at six. All right. But actually, do you want to figure out December while we're here too? Or actually, let's wait until maybe we want to like really work on a deadline kind of thing. So let's leave I'm December sorry. alone for now. What was that date we picked? The, the... November 14th. 14th. I got it right. Okay. It's six. Okay. Okay. And we're running a little long already. 
But okay, so we'll wait to hear back from Maureen about um, the working group thing. And do we have to have an official vote to make a working group? Let, let us not do that because the minute you do it, it's absolutely guaranteed 1000% that it's a subcommittee and it's you, you have no wiggle room whatsoever. Okay, all right. And then, okay, so I guess we're all set with making it public. Thank you, Maureen, for your time and expertise. Thank you so much. Yeah, okay, Thank great. You. I look forward to uh, working with you all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, and being that we're working on, um, or we we're running long here, let's um, not talk about logo. We'll talk about that next time. Um, but I did want, I did have an update about Boltwood Gallery. Uh, I talked to the Amherst Cultural Council and they're willing to let us bump our grant to next year. So next year, like in the, in the new year, we'll be thinking about how we're going to be um, putting out a call for artists for the Boltwood Walk Gallery project. And I was thinking, actually, maybe we should have a field trip sometime to get you guys into the Boltwood Gallery so you can see like what we're actually talking about. Um, I'm out of town, getting out of town, out of town about, a lot. So. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> I'm gonna look it up. I don't know what you is there a time that like we could just like meet at um at the parking lot behind where like Judy's used to be and I could like get you guys in and show you guys what we're talking about? I'm new to town, so I don't know what Judy's is, but <laughs> okay, it's um I can look up Burnett Gallery. It's on Amity Street. So. So no, Bert, the Bert, that gallery is in the library. This okay. is Boltwood. Boltwood. Oh, Boltwood. What is it? That space that Judy tried to turn into something? And no, it's um, uh, it's like the top of the parking garage. There's like this like utility closet, but there's windows looking into it. And oh, oh, oh! I know what you're talking about. It's yeah, like it used to be the poetry lot. in there like ages ago. Yeah. Yeah, so that's ours now. <laughs> so is that, is the, that the Amherst? Lot. Is that the Mass Cultural Council or the Amherst Cultural Council? That's the Amherst Cultural Council. Thank you. And so, so yeah, I would I would love it if we could just like take a look at that, and I would like to give the key, and I've got a box of files too that should be with somebody else because I'm gonna be out of town a lot, even during this time before March, I'm gonna be out of town a lot. And so it, it would be really awful to need access to, with the key to the, to the portal gallery and not be able to have it because I'm out of town. So if somebody else wants to be the, the key master, <laughs> You're very welcome to it. <laughs> so I'm can, can I know we don't have much time. So, uh, but I'm confused about the Amherst Cultural Council and the Arc this commission and that space. Are they all connected? Uh, we have a grant from the um, Amherst Cultural Council to um, essentially give an artist some money to oh. do an installation. We have in the past, we did one last year and it was very cool. It was like very kinetic and because they're deep windows, they go deep. Well, you'll see it when we have our field trip. And so there's an opportunity for like all kinds of like things in there. It doesn't have to be just like flat art. Okay. And like in the town hall. To the um, Amherst Cultural Council in terms of maintaining and no, the, they just gave us money for it. And it's ours to deal with. Oh, so this is money that they've given to do something else with it. Right. Okay. It, to give to another artist to do another installation. I see, thanks. Okay. Thanks for the clarification. Okay, do we need to, to come up with a time to do this field trip? Yeah.
Um, does anybody have any time, some time this week to go just take a little peekaloo at this? Um, what day were you thinking? I'm I'm versatile. <laughs> well, kind of. You're not feeling very good right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I missed that. I missed, I came at the tail end of something that happened for you, Shoshana, but I didn't hear Oh, it. yeah, I was in a car accident this weekend. Oh, goodness. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was not fun. Oh. This weekend is looking kind of, uh, no, <laughs> this week is rough. I've got some time next week, but I don't have any time this week. Okay, what about other? Well, I might have some time Friday. Anybody else? Friday, go up, what Friday? This Friday, the twenty eighth. Yeah, I do. I Anybody do have else have some free time on Friday? No. Um, late, late. Yeah, this. I mean, my meeting's going long. Sorry. <laughs> Um, late, late afternoon, possibly, but not not in the early okay, part. Of the I day. can't. I, I at five o'clock, I turn into a pumpkin on Friday. <laughs> That's a good weekend for that. <laughs> yeah, right. So I'm free around four. I work at the historical society on Friday, so I can't. But I've been there. Okay, so I know where the space is and all about it. Okay. I know the space, so I don't know if I need to see it, but I, I okay. don't. Yeah, I don't think you don't. Robert, what about you? What it um I I don't work in town and I'm a fair amount uh distance away. So I mean if you know I can probably figure out the time to at least walk by it on my own and then Okay. You know, scheduling is, is a challenge Rick is look in the windows if you do it because it gives you an understanding of what's behind what so, it's, so just uh, again where where is the space it's like that space do you know where johnny's tavern is yes okay it, there's like there's this stairwell that leads down to the parking garage that's in yep. front of um it, that's the spot and we have the windows, but there's also like a utility door behind the windows. Oh, and okay. we have the key and that space too. Oh, okay. The key right, goes right in front of where the White Hut used to be. I forget what it's called. Now. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm 10 minutes away. If you want to call me and see if I can get down there whenever you do it, if you want, I can maybe get down there, but it's up to you. Okay. What would you be what would you be telling us if we were because I can't probably can't get there, but I get there on my own. Uh, would I, I would just give you like a tour of like, you know, where the power is and what like how far back the little shadow boxes go. And you could like take a peek in the back room and see like the maximum space available and just stuff like that, just to get familiar with it. I, I would be happy to join, but I, I don't think I can do it this Friday, so. I could do it Friday and then we could go at a different date, at a, you know, and I, I would have the key if Shoshana can't make it. Right, yeah, I'll give you the key and then maybe, you know, other times might work out between the two of you. Yeah, why don't you, um, why don't you email me separately, Shoshana, and just give me a good time for you on Friday. I'm okay. pretty, um, I'm pretty available after noon. So give me, yeah, just tell me what time to meet you there and I'll try to find my way there with these weird directions. <laughs> I will <laughs> somehow make it there. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's a weird spot. It's like, I, I don't even really know exactly what to call I'm, it. I'm new it's to like, town. Everywhere is weird. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, and like half the things downtown are named Boltwood, so it doesn't help. <laughs> yeah, just send me a, a good time for you and we'll, we'll, we'll sort it out. Okay. All right, and I I think that's about it for today. I actually am running late for another thing that I got to do. Um, but does anyone else have anything, any like pressing issues, unforeseen 
48 hours before the meeting. <laughs> Absolutely adjourned. It was nice meeting you all. <laughs> yes. I yes, second that we adjourn. <laughs> I third it. <laughs> all right. Thank you, everyone, for coming. It was a pleasure to meet you all. I can't wait to do some more work with you guys and definitely think about like all these different roles and opportunities that are coming up for all of you. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Good night. Good night, y'all. Feel better. Thank you. <laughs> sure.